Hello everyone and welcome to the One Class Channel. Uh, my name is Jeff Kraus. I have a PhD in physical chemistry and today I'm going to run through a few undergraduate level, high school level uh, physics questions. Uh, so we can get right started here. Um, so this first question says we have a disc uh, we have a disc rotating uh, with a moment of inertia of 100 kilograms. I must have selected uh, some extra wide thing here. So I have a disc with a moment of inertia of 100 kilograms meters squared. And it's free to rotate without friction about a fixed axis through its center. Have some tangential force which can act and the force can take on anywhere between uh, 0 to 50 newtons and it can be applied anywhere between 0 to 3 meters so we can apply the force anywhere we want along the radius of the disc um, and we need to find a pair of values such that um, we move a delta theta equals two revolutions in a time <clears throat> of one second Okay, so we're, we're given all this, and it asks if the answer is unique. Um, so, okay, so we're given a force that acts on, at a radius. So what we're really given is a torque, as a torque, is F cross R, where R is the radius, um, but we can simplify this cross product by writing this as just F R sine theta, where, where theta is the angle which it's acting, um, as it's tangential, it's 90 degrees, so this, is, this angle is 90 degrees. Um, the sine of 90 is 1, and so this is just the force times the radius. Okay? So we have some FR, uh, and I'm going to actually write it as FR to be consistent with, with the notation I used above. So we've got some force times some radius, which is our torque. In circular motion, um, our, our analog to our force equation is just that our sum of our torques is equal to our I alpha. Um, I'm going to keep using this vector notation even though I don't really have a, I guess I'll put it at n hat. Um, just to, to give it our um, uh, direction um, and in this case the way I've drawn it right we would use a right hand rule and actually say that this that this is uh, if we draw our force not that the direction really matters here but just to be consistent and our radius then we would um, have our fingers going towards the, the direction of the, the force and we would point our palm towards the direction of R and this hand is <laughs> disfigured but it's okay um, and then the thumb would point in the direction of, of the unit vector N 
So the way I've drawn it in this figure here is, is correct. So our motion would be counterclockwise. And so the, the direction would be upward. Or in this figure here, the, uh, the moment, the torque unit vector would be out of the page. So that's really most of, mostly an aside, but just just to, for directionality purposes. Uh, but we're gonna drop the the n hat from here out just because it isn't necessary, as our our alpha is also going to be an n hat, so we can just solve for the magnitudes. Okay, so the sum of our torque is just F R, and it's going to be equal to our I alpha. We're given our I, and we're asked to solve for F and R. Um, and we're not asked to solve for an alpha, we're actually asked to solve for a theta. But we can do that. So, first of all though, we're going to solve this for alpha. Now alpha is d omega by dt, and so that means we can rearrange this to say that d omega is alpha dt, or we can integrate both sides to, uh, to get our omega. So uh, integrating the omega side, we would have omega minus omega naught. And then the alpha side would be the integral of f r over i dt from 0 to t. Um, assuming that we're starting from time 0 and going to some time t, uh, in this case we're just going to use, I'm going to leave it as t uh, for now, even though in the question it's given one second. Um, but the question is also tells us that we start from rest, so that's zero. And so omega is f r over i, as these are going to come out of the integral, times t. Um, minus zero, I should say, as we're going from zero to t, but of course uh, zero is zero. So then it's just f r over i t. Now um, we can solve for theta as uh, omega is d theta by dt and so then d theta is omega dt. So we can integrate both sides. Uh, from This one goes from theta naught to theta and this goes from 0 to t as well. And so we have a theta minus theta naught is equal to the integral from 0 to t, fr over i t dt. The integral of t is t squared over 2. And this is going to go from 0 to t. But of course, when t is equal to zero, this whole thing goes to zero. So then this is just fr over i t squared over two. And then, <clears throat> now we have our delta theta. So our delta theta is equal to fr over i t squared over 2. Okay, so now, now we have everything we need. Um, so just to reiterate, right, our I is 100 kilograms meters squared. Our T is 1 second. And um, our delta theta is 2.0 revolutions which is equal to 2.0, uh, actually, I'm not gonna write it like that, because that's just gonna be a lot of rewriting. Uh, so we wanna convert this into radians, so we're gonna multiply by two pi rads per revolution, 
And so this is then 4.0 pi. I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. So now um, <clears throat> we can pick a we can pick say a value of force and get um, and then we'll, we can solve for the radius. So if we pick say uh, F equals 50 newtons, um, then what we would actually find <laughs> is that our radius is not big enough. So we would find that R is um, delta theta times I uh, two times delta theta times I over F, which comes out to be um, something in our values about 800 pi kilogram meters squared per second squared, all over 50 newtons. And if you do that out, uh, this R is well greater than uh, three meters. And as this is our biggest value of force, that is going to be our smallest radius, which means that uh, at least for the values given in the question, there are no values of force or radius that work. Um, but uh, if we take a look at the solution here that somebody wrote up, they used 10 seconds uh, and 10 seconds is possible so I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna uh, use t equals 10 seconds as the t equals one second has no, there's no force or radius that that works. Um, so if that's the point of the question, then fine. There's just no values of force or radius that work. Um, but for the point of having something to solve, I'm going to use 10 seconds. Um, and so then our radius would be 2 times delta theta times I over F, which is equal to, um, and I missed my... I delta t, which should have been uh, down here, so t squared. And so that would have only been one. Um, that would have been the, the second squared actually here. And I'm gonna just get rid of that. So that would have just been the one there. So then now, uh, this is equal to 800 pi kilograms meters squared over 50 newtons and put my t squared times 10 seconds squared or uh, that could have been 100 seconds squared but if we run this through our calculator then we get uh, 0 0.503 meters and so then um, we, we have a pair now, so force equals 50 newtons can act at an R of 0 0.503 meters. Or um, if we pick an R of say three meters, then we can rearrange this for force. Which would be 800 pi kilogram meters squared over 3 meters times uh, 10 seconds squared which comes out to be a force of 8.38 newtons and so we have another pair and so obviously from just solving it the two times, neither of these are unique solutions. And in the end, you would actually have an infinite number of solutions because you could pick any value.
and find and find a, a an R for it. Um, obviously, these these are the borders, so you could actually only pick values between um, eight point three eight to fifty newtons, or R is between zero point five oh three to three meters. Um, anything less than those values uh, would be too small. So the force would have to be too large or the radius would have to be um, too large. Okay. Um, but there's still an infinite number of solutions between those values. Okay, if we check the solution here, um, so I guess we're pretty sure that this is gonna be good since I followed the, the time they used. And yep, yeah, so they basically run through the same process. Um, so rather than doing the integrals, they just directly use the equation, but that's fine. Um, you can re you rearrange for alpha and then just plug in your values. So they have the same thing here, so I alpha. So the alpha comes from um, two times delta theta, um, over, uh, and they didn't multiply by the i, right? So, two times delta theta is this, uh, or this delta theta is twelve point five seven rads. I thought that as pi, four pi, but you can imagine that four times three comes up to be about twelve. Um, Okay, and so then, uh, and they chose force values of 25.1 uh, and an R of two, so um, so they have even an, another couple values that you could that you could pick from. Uh, so obviously, it's becoming more obvious at least that the solution's not not um, unique. So the solution is correct. Uh, the posted question um, is an error, I believe, uh, t equals one second. t equals one second is not, uh, has no solutions. All right. So,